Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. Today I want to look at a pastel, I guess you would call it a pastel painting, by Ellen Eagle. I purchased her book last night. I'll eventually do a review on it. I tend to get behind when I review books and videos because I just have so many other things going on. This website is not a full-time job, it's a hobby. And I just share information that I've learned to help other artists and photographers improve their work. This is a non-commercial site. I don't sell any products. And that allows me to be honest as much as I can when it comes to this information. And I tend to be very straight up with a lot of it. So if you want to learn more about what I'm doing, you can download my free user's guide. Again, that's a non-commercial product. It's only meant to teach the modern artist how to learn a little bit more about composition and the atelier movement. And that's a really big part of it too. Learning about where art is going in the 21st century because of the modern art movement. There was a huge shift in the 20th century. Well, there's a new shift going on now. And that's called the atelier movement. And you can learn more about that from the Da Vinci Initiative and the Art Renewal Center. But anyway, I'm just going to look at one of Ellen's pastel paintings today. When I buy a book, I like to look through and maybe analyze a few pieces of their work with the harmonic armature. I don't use dynamic symmetry to analyze work anymore. And I talk about that a lot in my user's guide. The main reason is I just don't find it reliable when it comes to analyzing work. So with that said, let me get right into it. All right, here's the pastel painting that I wanted to take a look at today. This won't be a long video because it's pretty straightforward. When you're talking about the harmonic armature versus dynamic symmetry, I feel the harmonic armature is far easier to learn. And it is far easier to analyze work using the harmonic armature because it's much more universal. And I've been doing more research, reaching out to a lot more modern artists over the past year, trying to find out what they use. And so far, it's mainly focused in on the harmonic armature. Now they do use dynamic symmetry, but it's not in the way that a lot of this information is presented online. So it's really important to keep that in mind. But I'm still doing research, and as I do more research, I'll bring it to those that come to my website. All right, so I'm just going to bring up this pastel painting with the harmonic armature drawn on top of it. And I'll what I'll do is I'll just point out a few things. These analyzations, they're not complex because it's not necessary to break down a work of art to the point of distraction. And that's what I see a lot with dynamic symmetry. They, When you're dealing with dynamic symmetry in root rectangles and analyzing work using dynamic symmetry, one of the problems with it is that you have to break it down to a point of where the analyzation, it's not legible. And if you're trying to teach this information to those that are new to it, if it's not legible, you can't learn from it. And dynamic symmetry, when it, when it comes to dynamic symmetry, I recommend Jacob's book. But even with that book, I've had artists come back to me and they struggle with it. At the most basic level, you know, there are artists that they look at this and it's, it's, it's a lot to take in. But... If you want to go to that arena, definitely check out Jacob's book. But my recommendation is start with the harmonic armature first. And if you have any questions, when you get into dynamic symmetry, you can always email me, even though I don't really do a lot of videos on dynamic symmetry anymore. I'm more than willing to take questions about it to present that in the simplest light possible because there's a lot of artists and photographers that are confused. And one of the problems with photographers is that they really can't apply dynamic symmetry all that well because dynamic symmetry really isn't a practical tool for the modern photographer and if you want to learn more about that you can check out some of my other video lectures but let me bring up the harmonic armature 
on this painting. All right, so here it is. A few techniques that artists use when they're using this armature. They will use the diagonal lines to frame in their subject. They will use vertical and horizontal lines to frame in their subject. So you can use the diagonal lines to follow paths, for example, right here. If you notice here, this diagonal line is following the angle in the skeleton. Okay, you have this diagonal line here following this angle in the the wrist and then down the arm to the elbow. But I'm also going to show you how you can frame in these elements as well. So let me get right into that. Wherever you have two or more lines intersect, you can drop vertical and horizontal lines as well as diagonal lines, by the way, and I'll show you that as well. So I can drop a vertical right here, for example. And when I do this, it frames in this edge of the skeleton and I'll bring it all the way up for now. And then from that point, I can drop a horizontal line right here where these lines intersect. And what, what that does is it frames in the top of the skeleton. But then I can then drop a vertical from that horizontal line intersecting that diagonal line right there. And it frames in this element here. So with just a few lines, I've now framed in the skeleton, which is a big part of the composition. I can also drop diagonal lines. I can drop a diagonal line here where it intersects this series from this corner. And then I can drop it and intersect it at this point right here. And it gives me this angle in the hand. Again, I'm not dropping a thousand lines. And like I said, this is one of the problems I see with analyzations when it comes to dynamic symmetry. They're not legible. You have a shadow element here. Well, that can be derived from this vertical right there. And I'll draw a short one right there. Let me outline in blue some of these lines. So you have this diagonal line, as I had mentioned, following the angle here. You also have this diagonal line following the the skeleton's head, the tilt, in that area. You have the top framed in here. Then you have this vertical coming here, like I said. And then you have it framed in on the left-hand side right here. You have this diagonal line that I dropped at this point following the hand. And then you have this diagonal line being played out where it also goes up to the th to the uh, thumb at that point. You have this diagonal line following this point, the neck. You have this vertical here. So you can see what's going on here. You can frame in the elements. You can use the diagonal lines to follow visual paths. And this is a few ways the artist can use the harmonic armature. And again, I'm not dropping down a thousand lines. It doesn't require that. It's not necessary. You're framing in your subjects on the canvas in a position that makes sense that relates to the armature. You also have this diagonal line being played out here in the shirt cuff at that point. This is how this comes together when you're talking about design. Again, you don't need a lot of lines, just a few to frame in. You also have this diagonal line being played out right at this point too here, right there. So you could m bring these two lines together. You have this movement right in here. I hope this makes sense. I try to keep these as simple as possible. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it as always.